So we've got these three different uh, things we want to find out. We're going to see which sampling methods might be the best ones to use. And I've got a reminder of them at the top. So the first one says, you wish to test light bulbs produced by a factory in a daily batch. So there's a couple of different things that I think might be useful to try here. Andrew, what do you think would be a good one for this? The factory one, yeah. I tend to agree with you. I tend to agree that I think systematic sampling might be the best one. Now, we'll talk about some alternatives, but why do you think systematic sampling could be good? Yeah. And also, it's not yeah, it's very, it's really convenient because with, if you imagine a factory and you've got like all these light bulbs in a, and you want to just take every tenth light bulb or one every hour, that's quite an easy thing to do. So it's pretty convenient and it's also going to be quite inexpensive. But there are some al alternative ones that you could say that would, that would also be quite good. Were you going to say something different, Zainab? Well, I was going to say something about like, the amount of units. Yeah. Yeah, so I think the one that you'd suggested before, Amina, was that it was going to be a simple random sample. A random sample, technically, you'd need to have a sampling frame, and you'd need to be able to pick out the random numbers that match the light bulbs. Or, alternatively, you could just be like at the factory line, and you could just randomly pick them. But that's quite similar to the systematic one. I think the systematic one is a little bit better, because you'll have them spread out over the course of the day. Whereas the random one, it, it's, it's a bit difficult. But either random sampling, systematic sampling, there's just a few that obviously wouldn't be very good. You probably wouldn't want to do stratified sampling because what would the strata, what would the groups even be? I don't know. Times. The times that they're being made, but then I guess systematic sampling is also going to spread that out as well. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. There's a, a systematic sampling you could end up, if you did every fifth light bulb, that might come from one particular machine. So there's flaws in all of these things, and it's quite useful to think of what the flaws could be because that's the kind of little one-mark question. They might say every light bulb picked was from the same machine. What is the flaw? And you can be like, it's only testing one of the machines. So it's not always going to have like a hard and fast answer to these. What about this one? You wish to survey consumer opinion on your new drink, FizzGuzz, released in the UK. What did you think for this one? Yeah, I tend to agree with you. I think the opportunity one, opportunity sampling, would be pretty good for this. Um, I know beforehand, I mean, you'd suggested stratified sampling, which is a good idea, but it would be quite a lot more expensive, and you'd need to have a sampling frame of the whole population to think about how you wanted to split them up. So I think the good idea with an, an opportunity sampling is it's, again, it's going to be the same advantages of it being convenient and it being inexpensive. And the thing about it being inexpensive is because you probably wouldn't want to do opportunity sampling for when you really want it to represent the whole population. But here, I'm just interested if people like a new drink. Like, I don't, I don't want it to cost a lot of money because it's not... Sorry to people whose job is to do things like this, but it's not that important in the grand scheme of life, is it, if someone likes your new drink? So it doesn't matter if it's not perfectly representative of the whole of society, because we just want to know if people like the drink or not. So I think opportunity sampling is because it's convenient and it's inexpensive. You know, you could just be stood outside a supermarket. But you know what? If you can pick stratified sampling and you're able to convince the examiner that stratified sampling was important, then I think that would be good. But maybe they'd said something in the question like they don't have a large budget, then in that case, stratified sampling wouldn't be very good because they don't have a sampling frame. And then our last one here, when you want to find out what your favourite TV programme is in the school that's representative of each year group, this one is pretty obvious. This one has to be stratified sampling. And the reason it has to be stratified sampling is because we want it to be representative. And what else is something that's probably quite good to do stratified sampling if you're in a school? What do we have access to 
that we need for stratified sampling. Good. And we have the sampling frame. So I think last lesson when we were looking at these things, it felt like there was an awful lot of things to learn. But actually, if you just pause and think to yourself, what would be good about this? What would be bad about this? Most of this is common sense. It's just a few, a few bits of language, like sampling frames, sampling units. If you can use that language, it also makes it sound like you know what you're talking about as well. So just have like a, a sensible think about what would be useful. Um, think about what could be good about it and what could be bad about it as well.